Happy Monday here with FiredHype.com. How are you, Chop? Good, my man. Good. Big news recently, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones yeah. Jr. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that fight happening? Oh, I, think, I think it's crazy, man. I think it's good. I, mean, I think everybody will watch it. You know? like, um, they both um, obviously passed their primes, but both legends of the sport, you know what I mean? Have you had a chance to check out some of the footage on YouTube? Yeah, and they, yeah. What no, do you think? They're hyping it up good, man. Good and proper, so I think it's going to be great, great spectacle, man. And um, I think they both want it, so it's going to be, uh, they're going to compete at a good level. You think it'll be a, a massive pay-per-view event around the world? Well, given Roy Jones Jr.'s name and especially Tyson's name around the world, it's synonymous, you know? I can't see why it wouldn't be a blockbuster. You've had a lot to do with Roy Jones Jr. His father actually trained you a lot in your career. Yeah. Tell me a bit about your experiences with Roy. Yeah, Roy, Roy Jr., man, I met him. He's a cool cat, real good guy, real humble, down to earth sort of country guy from Pensacola. Yeah. Um, you ever no. done any rounds with him? Nah, nah. No? Nah, yeah. Never, but, you know, I know he's like, he's one of the goats of his time, you know, so. Yeah. Over your career, being a boxing analyst, some of your style sometimes I've actually thought is similar to Roy Jones Jr. Would you agree with that? Yeah, well, when I, you know, trained under senior, Roy Jones Jr., obviously he had the same implementation of the style of, of how Roy fights. He, he was the one that built that machine from a young kid, yeah. you know what I mean? All the way through, you know, he took it to the pros, you know, the same um, style. St I call the Roy Jones Senior style. Really? really? Yeah, he taught that style. The, the chicken, chick, like, like a chicken, you know, chopped yeah. chicken fights. Once you feet, in and out, yeah. side to side. You know. It's amazing we started this year, obviously, pre COVID and 2020. Potentially the biggest fight this year is going to be between a 54 year old and a 51 year old. It's mad, eh? It's crazy, man. I mean, but like I said, they got the, the names, they got the runs on the board, man. Like, yeah. Whatever happened later on in their career, nobody cares about that, you know. It's, and it's good to see, like, guys at that age, you know, don't, don't, just, don't just be a stereotype and think you can't do something at certain ages, you know what I mean? Like, you got to try and push yourself and believe in yourself. Speaking of older men, you're, you're getting a little bit older now, 45. Mm. Big session here this afternoon slash tonight. What's going on with you? You're just still ticking I'm just, over? I'm just ticking over, man. Hard rounds tonight? A couple of, um, well, not a couple. And one certain guy in particular has been talking a lot of smack about me. And, uh, yeah. I want to see what comes of it. If, he, if, he, if, he's, if he's all bark or, or if he's going to bite, you know. We obviously we know who we're talking about. We're talking about Michael Zarrat, but a lot of talk on social media. You know, I mean, Zarrat was on a podcast the other day, talking to certain individuals around it. What can you tell the fans about it? Like, Zoo and Horns happening obviously in four weeks. When could you potentially, if you fought Michael Zarrat? Um, I know. I'll, you know, given notice, I want at least eight weeks yeah. to prepare. Right. You know, I mean, I'm not just ticking over right now, staying in shape. But not fighting shape. So you got I'm gonna do this. It was, uh, if it did, if it did, does come together, um, November, December, to me sounds good. And it's tricky now, obviously, in Australia with, with the government cutting off the borders and certain restrictions. And that. I know there'd probably be a chance that the fight on their side would want it. They'd want it in Melbourne or, or Ben you go. Is there a possibility that you'd say, you know, what we can do it in Brisbane, Gold Coast, or Sydney? Yeah, it doesn't matter where we fight, man. As long as you got a, a square ring, square circle, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll throw it down with that, that dude anytime, any day. And I'll show him what's up. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Getting on under the NRL, you were at the Indigenous round the other night. What did you think of that? It's fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah, man. It's great to showcase Aboriginal history, Aboriginal talent, and Aboriginal culture. Having that Indigenous round and what the, the brothers done so much to the to the to the league over the years, you know what I mean, and, and just recognising the traditional no, owners um, and natives of the land. You know, that's, yeah. that's my people. So, one team up here at the moment, the, your old team, Brisbane Broncos. <laughs> Chop any advice for them on what they're doing right now? I know it, it's um, tough. They're a younger team. It's very tough. They're in. They just um, can't get the job done at the moment. I thought last night they played. The effort was was mm. hundred, you know, mm. second to none. Um, just got unlucky, they just 
failed in the last sort of back half of the game. Mm. And, you know, Cronulla got a couple of tries on them. But mm. just keep your head up, man. Just keep pushing. Yeah. Mm. You know, one, one, one game is not going to defy you. Know, you, know, you, know, you just, bring out, just keep your character competitive and, and willing. Do you ever think sometimes, Chuck, and I know you, you, you did boxing for such a long time, when you watch certain players in the latter part of their careers, like when they went on, obviously, the Fittlers, you know, and, um, certain Lockyers and all that sort of stuff, do you ever sometimes feel that you, you could have kept doing it? Or, or going back I, to I it? Been, I would have been a, a 400 gamer. Yeah, that's what I, I say that to people because uh, I you play, only played I, four I, years. I only played, I will, four five years, four and a half, four and a half. In, in, the, in the pros. I played like 100, and, probably nearly 150 games. 140 games. Like but, um, yeah, so... Because you, you, you went over to a brutal sport like boxing in 2000. People said you were mad to do it. You had your I, fight. I would, have, I would have played another 10 years. I uh, stayed there. Yeah, yeah, maybe more. Because, you know, in boxing, you box right up to 44. You know, you're taking some big 45. shots. 45. You know, just recently. You could have you could have gone through for a long time. Yeah, I believe I believe so. I'm just, I'm just a different kettle of fish. Like, I don't think like the stereotype thing is thing. No. Yeah, I may be not on my youthful, youthful, youthful side, but I'm definitely a better um, experience, seasoning, and cagey side. You know, I can't teach what I've been, you know, the experience I've gained in the last 20 years. As you were saying to Brownie last week on that podcast, I love that podcast. You know, I mean, one of the most inspirational, you know, individual of achievements was you in that 99 prelim in that second half was was absolutely incredible any memories of that trip yeah man i always have my you know flashbacks yeah you always yeah. take it everybody takes a walk down memory lane you know what i mean yeah so i mean sometimes you remember and there's certain places i go in sydney to go to certain places and i remember the bus trip taking the to the game to that to particular game yeah, going on king george road yeah. out to homebush and um, so that always brings that memory. Was there certain times in your career where you were boxing and that yet you were really missing it because you stayed boxing? Um, nah, no, nah, not really. I just had to go and, and focus. Once I left, I, m I made my choice, and I knew I wasn't never going to go back. I, I was never going to. I was never going to go back for a failure. You know what I mean? I wanted to succeed so much. Uh, I became obsessed, obsessed with it, and. Eventually, I obtained what I wanted, you know, three times over. So, um, a, a thing that happened here tonight, and people don't get and it frustrates me. They don't really get to know the true you, and I understand the reason for why that. People who who love you and get close to you get to know you. You were speaking to a young young teenager tonight about certain things that teenagers go through, and in, in Australia and around the world. What's your advice on that? I, I was just telling him, man, like. From my, my, my mindset, my um, experiences as a, as a team, what I went through, because everyone gets exposed to, to um, peer pressure, drugs, um, alcohol, and whatnot, you know what I mean? And I was telling my experience, I mean, you have to have a mindset of a chin. You have to be, um, you have to be a leader, not a follower. You know what I mean? You have to make sacrifices in order to to be, become successful in whatever field you, you want to you go down, especially especially sport. Because you know I mean? when you were 14, you made some massive sacrifices, didn't you? Yeah, definitely. I, um, I was at a, a house and all the boys were puff puff giving, giving, yeah. puff puff giving, you know, yarny around, bowling on. And um, telling to me, it's my turn. I said, I said, nah, nah, bro, not for me. But I sort of waited for about, froze for about 10 seconds, but it felt like a minute. And I was like, nah, I'm, I'm out, boys. I'll see you later. And then uh, up over the hill, I, I sort of walked home by myself. Up over the hill, I started breaking down uncontrollably, like crying. And I didn't know why, but when I stopped, I, I knew at that moment that I, ain't nothing gonna, ain't nothing gonna deter me or stop me from achieving what I want to achieve. And even when you, you know, when you went up to Brisbane and you played at the highest level, Super League money, you were on some big money back then, John. Yeah. Never once did you ever get in, or did you ever once? Never. I mean, if everyone, know, if people know that the league, the rugby league culture, a lot of it's alcoholic, alcohol driven, and you know, some would say, you know, drug driven these days. You know what I mean? With the, with the party pills and all that. Um, it was still the same back then. Maybe not as. Um, highlighted from media and stuff, but it was still pretty prevalent back then. Um, 
but I become I become respected so much because of my stances. Players would, just, you know, if anyone might offer me a drink, they'd say, nah, don't use him, he's right. Really? Yeah. So you started getting that respect. Because I remember when I first met you years and years ago, we were at this nightclub for Valor in Sydney, and we were there, it was like one o'clock in the morning, quite cut, remember? Yeah. And you were drinking, it looked like you were drinking vodka, but you weren't, it was like lemonade or something, yeah. but you were buzzing around. Yeah, man, I mean. Dance a lot more. There's, no, there's no other high than a high on life, to you kids, to you mob out there. There's no other high than a high on life. You content and happy with your life, and what you're doing, you know, and what you're achieving, and how you um, carry yourself, the choices you make in life, no other high you get, you can't beat that. No other, no drug, no alcohol can beat that. You know, and when, and alcohol, when you have problems and you go to dark places, alcohol and drugs take even the, to darker places. You know what I mean? That's why a lot of mental health issues and whatnot is around alcohol and drugs. So if you, if you can, people don't. And you, and you got the opportunity to, to, to say no, be a leader, don't be a follower. Lead yourself and lead others. All right, Chop, anything last message to your fans? Because you know, I mean, look, you've got a lot of fans still nah, around stay, Australia. Stay, stay, stay tuned. I'm about to shock the world, man. I, for real, we're about to shock the world and show them, show them what's up. And they never, they never say never, you know what I mean? So just listen out and God willing, I'm just going to live in other lives' hands. And whatever happens, it's, 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 um, it's good that I was, I was born. All right, thanks, Chop.